The echo of hoofsteps rang out in the empty castle halls. Pale moonlight flashing off the guard's armor. His demeanor was calm and relaxed, walking slowly but with purpose. Whenever another guard passed him, he would nod his head briefly, and they would do the same before moving on, never giving him a second glance. And why would they? He had the armor, he had the equipment, hey, he even had the looks. The guard smiled. Ugh, this was too easy. Don't get cocky, he reminded himself. That's what went wrong last time. Months of preparation had led up to this moment, hours and hours of meticulous planning and effort. He couldn't throw it all away again from overconfidence. A right, a left, two more rights, and then the third corridor on the left. The guard wound his way through the maze of corridors with practice ease, though tonight would be the first time he actually rounded that final corner, and round it he did. His destination revealed at last. Two more guards flanked a huge golden doorway, the insignia of the sun etched into its surface. The guard didn't hesitate at the imposing portal. If anything, his pace increased as his face adopted a suitably concerned expression. The sentry said the door moved to block his path. The princess has retired for the evening, said one. She will be seeing nobody until the morning. The guard simply produced a letter from a pocket in his armor and held it out to them. As they read it, their faces somehow managed to grow even paler than their already snow-white fur. There's... Are you sure? Asked the door pony in hushed tones. The guard nodded grimly, stowing his letter again. I must speak with the princess personally. The password... Corona. The sentries gave each other a nervous glance before stepping aside, horns glowing as the door swung open, and a burst of relief filled the guard's chest. He had been worried about this, even if the hardest part was yet to come. He stepped through the golden entryway into Celestia's quarters, hooves sinking deeply into the carpet. The rooms were mostly dark the only light coming from the flickering glow of a candle in her bedroom. The guard jumped as the door snapped shut behind him, and he cursed himself under his breath for his skittishness. Hello? The princess called out. I gave orders not to be disturbed. The guard shook his head, getting back into character. Forgive me, princess, but I have urgent news. He could hear the exasperated sigh from the other room. Fine, fine, said Celestia. Come in. Her bedroom was just as extravagant as expected. The bed alone could sleep ten ponies, if they were willing to get a little closer than could be called prudent. Celestia herself sat at an equally oversized desk, regarding her new visitor with a cold curiosity. What is it? she asked. Again, the guard produced his letter, wordlessly levitating it onto her desk among the rest of the paper strewn over its surface. Celestia read it in silence. When she finished, the princess took a deep breath. I hope you didn't hurt the guards outside, she said, her back to him. The guard grinned. You're far too clever, princess. It almost takes fun out of it. How could you tell? Twilight Sparkle always addresses me as Princess Celestia in her letters, and you left off the title. Celestia turned, and her eyes were filled with resignation. You might as well show yourself now. It's just us here, after all. The guard shrugged, and almost instantly, the white fur that covered him began to fade into nothing, followed quickly by his golden armor. Chitinous black rose to the surface to replace it and the pony's limbs stretched and thickened as green magic crackled around them. After only a couple of seconds, the guard had been entirely replaced by a far more menacing figure. Queen Chrysalis smiled cruelly. Better? she asked. Hardly. Celestia replied through gritted teeth. Give me one reason why I shouldn't blast you to ash, 
where you stand. The changeling cackled. Why in the question would I let you do that? Do you really think I'll be here if I didn't have insurance? A favorite student, perhaps? The princess's eyes twitched. After all, Chrysalis continued, I had to get somebody to sign that letter. Who better than the real thing? If you touch a hair on Twilight's mane, growled Celestia, then I'll have nothing to barter with. Twilight is perfectly fine, if a little preoccupied. And as long as you do exactly as I say, she'll stay that way. And what do you want? Well, I would have thought revenge should be obvious enough, Chrysalis sighed. But I'll be honest, Celestia, just getting rid of you wouldn't really satisfy me. That's far too boring. The princess bit her lips. What then? Torture? Oh please, I'm much too kind of a queen for that. Celestia snorted in derision. Though Chrysalis ignored her, lazily inspecting one of her hooves. No, what I want from you, princess, Chrysalis said, a wicked smile growing on her face, is to feed. There was a long silence. Crickets chirped outside the window, the only sound in the otherwise still air. That's the line you're going with? Celestia asked eventually. Chrysalis stamped a hoof in indignation. Damn it, Tia! We talked about this! Uh, no, I know, I know, but I thought we were trying to avoid cliches. And I thought we were trying to not break character. Goddess, you always do this! With a frustrated sigh, Chrysalis flopped backwards onto the bed. I'm sorry said Celestia. It just sounded a little over the top. That's all I meant. Chrysalis's face now wore a definite pout. I didn't say anything when we did your dungeon thing. No, I know you didn't. Look, I'm sorry I said anything. Let's just pick up where we left off, shall we? Okay. Chrysalis muttered, head bowed. Shall I do the line again? I suppose if you want to- To feed! Chrysalis bellowed, leaping back to her feet with another wide, maniacal grin. Celestia looked like she might break at any second, but with Herculean effort, she managed to fight back the laughter. And how do you intend to do that, Chrysalis? If you think I'll ever give you my love, then- Oh, please. The changeling cut in. Spare me the fighting talk. You and I both know that love really boils down to one thing. That's what I'm going to take from you. T- uh, uh, Celestia. And by the end of the night, you'll be begging me to take it from you again and again. Celestia was silent, her eyes wide in faint fright. Y you, you can't. I, I won't. Chrysalis had to admit, the princess played her part well. Oh. But I can, and you will. The alicorn hung her head. And you promise you won't harm Twilight? Cross my heart. Chrysalis replied, her forked tongue flitting between razor-sharp fangs. Celestia's voice dripped with venom. You've never had a heart, changeling. Any cruelty suddenly fell out of Chrysalis' demeanor. Hey. Sorry, is that too harsh? I mean, I know I'm playing the big bad change from Queen again, but still too close to home. Chrysalis nodded sullenly. I promise I didn't mean any of it. Celestia looked as though she was about to jump out of the chair and give the changeling a hug. If she was being honest with herself, Chrysalis wouldn't have minded that at all. I know, I know. The changeling smiled weakly. You're way too good at pretending to be mad. Well, uh, when you have half as many audiences with insufferable ponies as I have, you quickly learn how to put on a show. Do you still want me to carry on, or...? Of course I do. I, I was just... 
Never mind. Where did we get to? I was asking about Twilight's well-being. Right, yes. Crystal straightened herself once more, leering down at Celestia. Don't worry, princess, as long as you satisfy me. Twilight will be absolutely fine. Celestia bit her lips. Very well, she said finally, her words shaky and unsure. You may have me. The queen closed the gap, lifting Celestia's chin with a hoof so she could stare directly into the princess's eyes. Oh, but my dear, she murmured, I already do. Before Celestia even had the time to react, Chrysalis started forward and pressed her lips against the monarchs, making the princess squeak in surprise. She did little to pull away, though, perhaps forgetting the act in the heat of the moment. And when they finally broke apart, Celestia's mouth stayed slightly open, breathing deeply, her face flushed with red. Hmm, I was expecting a bit more resistance than that. Chrysalis taunted, sliding over to the bed. This is going to be easier than I thought. The princess refused to look at Chrysalis even as her cheeks burned. Let's get this over with, she muttered. Oh, I don't think so. The revered Princess Celestia, bound to my slightest whim. I'm going to save her every moment. Chrysalis sprawled back onto the bed again. Let's start with something easy, she said, grinning wickedly and sticking out her hind leg. Clean my hoof. Celesta gave her a black stare. You can't be serious. Would it kill you to play along for five minutes? Clean your hoof? You said you weren't going to go crazy with this. I'm not. Then we have a very different idea about what constitutes too far. I watched it before we started, you know that. Of course, but, but still. You had to walk to get here, didn't you? What worries me, Crystal said, blowing a strand of her mane out of her face in irritation, is that you'll be perfectly fine letting me hoof you off, but the second you have to put one in your mouth, that's totally different. Celestia protested. Is it? Really? I would think your mouth would be the better place for it, all things considered. I'm not putting it in my mouth. <sighs> okay, what if... Krista's horn lit up, her magic briefly surrounding the offending limb. There, it's clean. Will you do it now? Is it that important? Yes, it's the first step in your submission to me. Without it, the whole dynamic falls apart. Celestia rolled her eyes. Fine, Chrysalis. I'll do it. But only because it's you. The changeling's face lit up momentarily, before she remembered her role and reined herself in. Oh, and another thing, she said, and her voice had regained the menacing edge from before. From now on, you may only refer to me as my queen. Fine, my queen. Celesta couldn't have been less enthusiastic if she tried, and Chrysalis briefly thought about arguing with her. In the end, she decided to let it slide. Unwillingness was an important part of the fantasy, after all, and there would be no fun if Celesta went along with everything too easily. The princess walked slowly to the foot of the bed, eyes fixed on the protruding hoof. After a final deep breath, to prepare herself, Celestia lowered her head and ran her tongue along its edge. You might as well kneel down, Crystal said, though her tone suggested it was more than just a casual recommendation. To her surprise, Celestia acquiesced without any arguments, bending her legs and sinking to the floor. The sight sent shivers down Crystal's spine. The princess of the sun bowed before her rightful queen, her soft, wet tongue slowly exploring her captor's hoof. But Chrysalis couldn't let her control the pace. That would defeat the whole point. So she pressed her hoof forwards, 
Celestia left with no choice but to open her mouth or risk offending the queen. Any protest was quickly muffled, and Crystal sighed happily as Celestia accepted her new position, sucking the edge of Chrysalis's hoof further into her mouth as her tongue rolled against the sensitive sole. Celestia's eyes were clamped shut, refusing to look at the demeaning act she was performing, even as her attention grew more evident, peppering kisses and licks against Chrysalis's hoof. It was tempting to let the alicorn caress continue for even longer, to keep her kissing the queen's hoof, both figuratively and literally. But another, more pressing desire had begun to build in Chrysalis's manhood. One she couldn't ignore. We'll have to do this again, Celestia. Chrysalis reclined further back on the bed, spreading her legs slightly. But now your attention is needed elsewhere. Celestia released the hoof from her mouth slowly, giving it a final kiss as she did so that made Chrysalis beam in triumph. She had enjoyed it. Chrysalis knew she had even if she would have denied it later. They both knew the truth. Celestia's warm breath rolled over her stomach, snapping Chrysalis back to current events. And though she wanted nothing more than to let the princess bury her face between Chrysalis's thighs, it wasn't playing by the script. Almost reluctantly, she placed a hoof on top of Celestia's head, resisting the urge to run it through that impossibly soft mane and instead pushing her back down. So eager, she purred. Anyone would think you wanted this, princess. Celestia hung her head in mock shame. Don't worry, I shall let you taste me. Crystal continued, but you have to work your way up to it, and take it slow. For good measure, she tapped Celestia playfully on the muzzle before sinking down again closing her eyes in satisfaction as the princess wordlessly began to kiss the inside of her leg. Her warm lips worked a delicious trail along Chrysalis's thigh. Each new brush against her skin stoking the embers of already burning me. Closer and closer she crept, and now Chrysalis was beginning to regret allowing the princess to tease her like this. She had to keep the facade of control though, even if it meant she had to force down shudders of anticipation each time those lips pressed softly against her. Excruciatingly slowly, Celestia closed the last few inches, coming to a halt just before Chrysalis's already soaked entrance. Chrysalis swarmed against the sheets as each of Celestia's exhalation sent a tantalizing warm brush of air over her folds. She was so close now, too close, so close that Christmas was just about to lose all semblance of restraint and dominance and scream at the alicorn to end her unbearable teasing. My queen, the princess whispered huskily, and Christmas could hear the smug satisfaction in her voice. Oh, she'll regret that later. But for now, Chrysalis was long past resisting. Do it, she commanded. As Celestia obeyed, at long last that wonderful tongue of hers that previously only toyed with Chrysalis's hoof came to rest squarely against the changeling's mirrorhood, moving ever so delicately slowly upwards. Chrysalis laying out a frothy moon as the attention she had been denied for so long was finally paid in full. Her hooves clutched Celestia's mane, thighs tightening to hold the princess's head tight where it was, to keep it there forever if she could. Her back arched as the wandering tongue barely brushed her clitoris, nothing more than the barest hint before moving down again. That's it, princess, said Chrysalis, and to her credit, her voice only quavered slightly. This is your place now. Celestia responded only by increasing her pace, forcing a sudden gasp from the changeling. 
Kuzlis couldn't help but buck her hips against Celestia's muzzle, and if anything, the princess only redoubled her efforts. That swirling tongue quickly becoming the only thing in the world that mattered. As Chrysalis's breath came short and sharp, her eyes grew tightly shut. She opened them briefly to the sight of Celesta looking up at her, sandwiched between her thighs, and that alone was enough to send another intense jolt of pleasure through her, only adding to the rushing waves that Celesta's attention already brought with them. The fantasy had fallen by the wayside, lost in the surge of sensation that Celesta could eke so effortlessly out of her, and Chrysalis's loud exultation filled the bedchamber. Perhaps the guards outside could hear them. Chrysalis didn't care. All she cared about was making sure Celesta kept going, kept going until Chrysalis reached the edge and was pushed right over it, and then kept going some more. And the edge was close already. Celeste was always far too good at this. And Chrysalis could feel the first electric shivers that ran all the way from the base of her tail and up her spine. Don't you dare stop, she warned breathlessly, her hooves clutching desperately at nothing. Oh, goddess, don't you dare. And Celeste didn't. Instead, Taking Chrysalis's sensitive nub into her mouth one final time, Chrysalis screamed out in bliss as her orgasm exploded through her, racking every part of her body completely, her hips spasming weakly against Celestia's relentless assault. Coherent thought was impossible. Chrysalis had practically melted into a puddle of sweat and sex and ecstasy with no room for anything else. The princess clapped tightly in between her legs, doing everything in her power to keep Chrysalis riding her climax for as long as possible. It seemed as though it would never end, but just as Chrysalis could take no more, the crashing waves at last began to subside. The changeling finally able to relax her limbs and release Celestia from her vice-like thighs. The princess didn't pull away immediately giving Chrysalis a couple more languid licks and giggling when she shuddered. Did that please you, my queen? asked Celestia, running her tongue over her lips in a blatant teasing display. Chrysalis forced her breathing to slow, the haze of lust that had thrust the illusion of control aside beginning to clear at last. It was a good start, at least, she said and was gratified to see uncertainty in Celestia's face again. But I can't be having all the fun, can I? Chrysalis's horn sparked to life, magical green tendrils bursting from it and wrapping themselves quickly around the princess's legs. Before she could even start to form a sentence, one gagged Celestia as the rest finished tying her up. You didn't really think I was going to let you off that easily, did you? Chrysalis held her cruel smile for a long moment before Celestia's worried expression forced her away, and she pulled the gag from the alicorn's mouth. If this is too much, we can stop. Celestia blinked at the sudden change in the alicorn's demeanor. Oh no, it's, uh, I mean, it's not quite what I was expecting, but... So you're okay with it? The princess glanced over her shoulder at herself, trussed up and held floating in midair by Chrysalis's magic. I suppose I have to be. Chrysalis clopped her front hooves together in excitement. Great, but er, uh, if you want, stop. Just light up your horn, alright? I know, I know. We did cover all this before we started, remember? I know, it's just... Chrysalis gestured at the magical bindings. This was kind of a uh, spur of the moment, and Chrysalis? The changeling queen started at the interruption. Y yes Shut up. Get on with it, would you? Oh, uh, right. After a quick, dismissive shake of her head, Chrysalis replaced the gag and straightened herself. The callous smiled back again. 
though noticeably more hesitant this time around. Hmm, that's better. We wouldn't want anyone hearing us, would we? Never mind the fact that not even minutes earlier, Chrysalis had been shouting her own climax to the high heavens, or that Celestia's guards had been instructed to turn a blind ear to anything they might hear tonight. Yes, never mind that indeed. The tendrils carried the bound monarch to the bed, dropping her lightly onto it, while it still holding her tight enough to restrict almost all movement. That look suits you, Celestia, said Chrysalis, making her way over to her muted prisoner. It's even better than the cocoon I made for you last time. Much more. Reaching her prize, Chrysalis trailed a hoof gently over the princess's flank. Accessible. Celestia quivered at her touch, and Chrysalis smiled to herself. Yes, this was much better. No more fighting her own body. No more having to restrain herself under such trying conditions, knowing full well that every moan was another defeat. Now it was clear who was in charge. And Chrysalis relished her new position. The princess spread out before her like the subservient plaything she was supposed to be. Her hoof wandered idly over the curve of Celestia's ass as she decided on the best course of action, tracing over the sun that graced Celestia's ivory fur. The hoof wandered lower, inwards, asserting her dominance again inch by inch as she drew closer to Celestia's waiting near her. She could feel its heat already, the princess's eagerness obvious, even from here, and Chrysalis gave a disappointed sigh, and I thought you would make it difficult for me. Her hoof found its mark, running torturously slowly up Celestia's folds, Chrysalis delighting in the way the alicorn tensed completely in her bonds, a muffled groan escaping through the gag. But you've gotten yourself so worked up, there's almost no challenge in it. She leaned in close to Celestia's face, dropping her voice to a whisper. Of course, that doesn't mean I'll go easy on you. Another whimper, another futile struggle against the bonds. Oh, yes. Chrysalis could easily get used to this, interrupting the princess's movement with only the lightest touch against her, forcing out another moan. Perhaps a bit unfairly, Chrysalis had the advantage of already knowing all of Celestia's weak spots. It didn't quite fit the roles they had set up, but Chrysalis didn't see Celestia complaining. Her tail flicking impatiently from side to side, urging the hoof to continue. A rush of excitement filled Chrysalis at the sight of Celestia, such a powerful and respected pony, a little short of a goddess, in fact, reduced to such base instincts. I know I shouldn't play with my food, said Chrysalis, coaxing another stifled moan from the alicorn, but you make it so tempting. Celestia's cheeks had become a delightful shade of pink now. A strand of her sweat-slicked mane plastered to her forehead as she shook in Chrysalis's grasp. Each time the changeling graced her with another touch, she would shake against the magic ropes, teeth clenched around the one in her mouth and moaning like some wanton whore. And though Chrysalis loved seeing Celestia like that, it was the times in between those moments that she truly enjoyed. The pure unbridled need in Celestia's pose, the way she started to tense up even before Chrysalis touched her, the way her marehood went with desire, just as wet as Chrysalis herself had been, and most of all, the sweet, almost overpowering love that poured out of her, practically filling the room though so much of it. So much that Chrysalis could have fed herself for a month, she partook in that as much as the physical enjoyment in front of her, promising herself she wouldn't overdo it and then doing it anyway. Celestia's love and lust almost making her giddy from its pure potency. This wasn't a meal, 
This was a feast, and Celestia seemed to always have more love to give. Chrysalis took it all in. Celestia's teeth were clenched so tightly around her magical bindings now, Chrysalis toying with her mercilessly, leaving less and less time before each new caress drove the alicorn into more and more feverish desires. A part of Chrysalis wanted to rip away the gag to hear the sweet sounds of the princess's moan properly, but she held herself back. There will be plenty of time for that later, after all. And for now, it was more important that Celestia truly accepted her new place under Chrysalis's hooves. And if she hadn't been accepting before, that was rapidly changing as Chrysalis abandoned her teasing altogether and focused on bringing the alcorn to a long-awaited climax. Celestia began to push back against Chrysalis's hooves, any pretense of her reservation completely abandoned by this point. A slave to the baser instincts that Celestia, of all ponies, should have kept buried. But here she was, as horny and uncontrolled as a simple mare in heat. And she was Chrysalis's mare now. She had given herself completely, no longer even trying to struggle free from the ropes, only wanting more of Chrysalis's touch, to do anything if Chrysalis would only push her to the limit push her right over it. Chrysalis knew Celestia's body well, knew just how to bring her right to the edge and keep her there, even knew that once her right ear started flicking that Celestia was teetering on the edge of climax, moments away from dropping into shuddering bliss. And so, as soon as Celestia's ear so much as twitched, Chrysalis stopped. She pulled a damp hoof away from the alcohol the air feeling almost icy against her after the seemingly furnace-like heat of Celestia's marehood. The princess made a pitiful sound, halfway between a mule of desperation and a growl of frustration. And she stared over her shoulder at Chrysalis with a look of intense pleading. Don't, it said. Please, I need this. Please don't stop. But all Celestia could do was watch, unable to do anything to sate that deep ache as Chrysalis slowly began to lick her hoof clean. Really, I should have made you do this, said Chrysalis as she lapped up the last of Celestia's excitement. But I just couldn't resist. Celestia squirmed in her bindings and Chrysalis responded with an unconvincing, confused expression. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want me to keep going? The princess nodded enthusiastically. Well, in that case. Chrysalis finally pulled the gag away, its magical strands unwinding and dissipating into the air. Beg. The princess barely hesitated. Please, Chrysalis, I... A sharp smack filled the room, and Celestia's words were transformed into a yelp of surprise. Chrysalis loved doing that. She didn't even have to strike the princess's rump all that hard to produce such a wonderful sound. Remember who you're addressing, she warned, and Celestia flinched. Please, my queen, she whispered. Please don't stop. Please don't. Very well, but only because you asked so nicely. There was a quiet, magical crackle almost too quiet to hear, the same sound made whenever Chrysalis transformed herself. But when Celestia craned her neck around, the same changeling was standing there, though her grin had widened to a distinctly worrying degree. Moving like lightning, Chrysalis leapt on her, holding Celestia down even as the ropes constricted, mounting her almost like a stallion would. The changeling started to muzzle against her ears and neck planting kisses and soft bites against her skin. But Celestia wasn't really focused on that. Her attention was held squarely on the unmistakable hardness that was pressing into the small of her back. A hardness that Chrysalis really shouldn't have had in her possession. The submissive act dropped in an instant. 
Chrysalis. What the hell is that? Chrysalis appeared entirely unfazed. Do you know, she murmured in between kisses, what an ovipositor is? What? That, coupled with Celestia's horn immediately sparking to life, glowing nearly as bright as the sun itself, was far too much for Chrysalis. She toppled off of her lover, cackling at the top of her lungs. Oh, God, it's your face. She managed to split her in between great, whooping bellows of laughter. Celestia's eyes narrowed. That was a joke, then? Of course it was a joke. We don't have ovipositors. You know that. I don't even know what one looks like. But ponies are terrible when it comes to rumors. It was too good of an opportunity to let pass. Celestia shook her head. You really are the worst. She said, and Christus grinned devilishly. But in that case, what was that thing? A soft, sultry giggle came from behind Celestia as Chrysalis's hoof began to run down her back, sending tingles up her spine. A little something I borrowed from my transformation earlier. Celestia tried to crane her neck around to look at the changeling, but Chrysalis was too far back and the bindings had too little give. Tell me you didn't. She most definitely had. Chrysalis was atop of her again, and that unmistakable hot stiffness lay heavily against Celestia's rump. It almost felt like it burned, giving off such an eager heat. And though Celestia couldn't see it, she could feel enough to know Chrysalis had been very generous when she endowed herself. You can't expect me to. Chrysalis cut her off with another hard smack against her flank, the sudden sting making Celestia yell. Don't you put the gag back in, she warns, slipping almost instantly back into that cruel, dominant act. Celestia found it rather impressive how quickly the changeling could switch her personality, though not at all surprising. You don't want me to have to silence you again, do you? Celestia shook her head. No, my queen. Good. I want to hear you this time. Christmas resumed kisses that had been so suddenly interrupted earlier, every now and then lightly nipping the skin, tiny pinpricks in her otherwise velvet soft affections, and Celestia sank into them. Letting Chrysalis work her way across seemingly every inch of her neck. The leaden heat against her rump was as tempting as it was intimidating. She could say no, she knew. She could tell Chrysalis to change back, and the changeling would do so without question. But a perverse frill had taken a hold of the princess, and it refused to be so easily dissuaded. It wanted to be held down by the queen, mounted and mated, taken and enjoyed, and finally granted the wish she had been craving all night. Her body ached with pure, unbridled need, never sated, even after being so, so unbearably close. And the mere thought of Chrysalis pushing into her sent huge trembles through Celestia. Chrysalis sighed contently above her. Oh. So you are ready for me, aren't you? And Celestia was. There was no point in trying to deny it. Not when she was so wet, her skin so flush, shivering in anticipation after every one of Chrysalis' almost delicate kisses. What would her subjects say, she wondered, if they could see her like this, tied up and legs weak? all at the whim of a changeling queen. If they could see the way her entire body begged for Chrysalis to take her, tail lifted high and to the side, displaying so much of herself, her head bowed in submission. But all those thoughts and embarrassment immediately fled the moment Chrysalis drew back, her length running over Celestia's eager marehood. Its touch so irresistible as she tried to push herself back towards it, 
The ropes held fast, and all the princess could do was wait. Each moment more unbearable than the last, as chrysalis moved oh so slowly. And finally, there was nowhere left to go. The tip of her chrysalis's member poking teasingly against her fold. The queen leant down one last time, and Celestia was practically panting with desire. Like I said, Chrysalis whispered, and even just her voice sent electricity darting through Celestia's body. I already have you. And then she thrust forward, parting Celestia's opening and delighting. In the ecstatic shout she forced out of the princess after such a simple movement, Chrysalis stayed there for a moment, holding herself in at the hilt as Celestia moaned weakly beneath her, trying to buck her hips but held back by both the rope and Chrysalis's grasp. This was her punishment. Chrysalis reasoned for her impudence earlier, a regal alicorn no longer. Reduced to Chrysalis's plaything, the bed beneath her soaked with lust, tail held as high as it could and begging Chrysalis to continue. She took a moment to enjoy the sight, Celestia's tongue lolling and will broken beneath her. Before slowly beginning to pull back out, Celestia shuddering and tightening around her length as she withdrew. And with her went the ropes uncoiling and dissipating into nothing as their magic faded, no longer needed or wanted. Celestia had already submitted completely. The bindings would only give the princess an excuse to argue otherwise later. She made no movement to struggle as they fell away, if anything only trying to coax Chrysalis back again by lifting her rear up high, giving a desperate sound from low in her throat. Chrysalis was only too happy to oblige, gripping Celestia's flank tightly as she thrust in again, hips smacking loudly as they collided. This was far from the first time Chrysalis had appropriated the tool that was now almost painfully hard between her legs, and she was no stranger to the feeling of wet, wanting air wrapped so wonderfully around it. But this... This was new all the same. The first time she had tried this with the princess, and the way each of Celestia's shudders was matched by her marehood clamping down around Chrysalis's length, instinctively trying to draw her deeper inside, even at their limit. That was new, and Chrysalis wanted it more than anything. Her thrust grew more voracious, more animalistic, clenching her teeth tightly as she took the mare, rutting her. Celestia didn't seem to mind. Her moans only grew louder at Chrysalis's rough treatment. The air was thick now with the scent of Celestia's excitation. Or was it Chrysalis from before? She couldn't tell, and it really didn't matter. It served only to drive Chrysalis even more wild. She was losing herself. She knew they both were, rationality and cohesive thought dissolving under the mad, almost feral lust that had consumed them. Royalty no more, they were wild beasts, and she had claimed Celestia as her mate. The princess's cries were joined by harsh grunts as Celestia fucked her, almost no regard for Celestia's pleasure or even its denial. She had been toyed with, she had done the same right back with a vengeance, and now all Chrysalis cared about was rutting the princess into the mattress, burying herself deeper and deeper. There were no words, not any more. They had been replaced by growls and moans and hisses of breath between bare teeth. They had become unrepressed squeals and low, lustful purrs each saying more than simple speech ever could. Black hooves gripped white flanks, a beautiful contrast, Chrysalis hold almost entirely eclipsing the sun that adorned them. Duh, ah, uh. Celeste could barely even start words, let alone 
whole sentences. Each time Christus pushed into her again, the syllables all seemed to melt away into another moan, another submission. Don't stop, she breathed in between great panting breaths. Don't, uh, don't stop, please. Oh, fuck, D oh, don't stop. The coarse language, coming from such a figure of purity, sent another shiver through Chrysalis, who already had no intention of stopping this time. No more games. They had all been building up to this anyway, this moment. And she'll be damned if she was going to stop now. At first, familiar but still thrilling tingles began to rise through Chrysalis' body. Celestial already wild movements reached their peaks hooves pawing meekly against the sheets, her moans devolving into a staccato gasp as her climax ripped through her, denied no longer, finally pushed over the brink, clenching almost painfully around Christmas as she took her. If the bed coverings weren't ruined before, they certainly were now. Drenched in sweat and lust as Celestia quaked in pleasure atop them. And with her own orgasm fast approaching, Chrysalis didn't give Celestia time to recover. She was still in charge after all. She was still the one in control, pulling herself rightfully first, pushing her body down on Celestia to hold her shaking form still. The princess was so hot, and Chrysalis buried herself in warm fur, her muzzle once again finding its way to Celestia's neck, the affectionate kisses becoming more and more aggressive as a frost quickened. A final, bestial growl. The rush of climax impossible to hold back even if Chrysalis wanted to. Biting Celestia hard enough to leave a mark, frosting to the hilt. She couldn't have held Celestia's flank harder as she released into the alcorn. Her hips shuddering and spasming as she came again and again, filling her princess completely. Celestia almost hit another orgasm, so sensitive already, and faced with such powerful, errant thrusts as Chrysalis' warmth sank into her body. But finally, Chrysalis' orgasm faded. Finally, her limbs were able to relax and disentangle themselves from Celestia's exhausted body. Though, instead of retreating, Chrysalis lay on her conquest's back kissing the skin she had marked and nuzzling against the princess's neck. Love filled the room in the resounding quiet after, almost tangible now, so thick Christmas felt she could practically bite into it. But she had already had her fill. She didn't need this. Instead, she just let its comforting embrace wash over her, let it continue to build, to cover her in affection. When she finally rolled to the side, landing heavily onto the bed, Celestia was quick to scoop her up into a loving hug and trade relaxation for nuzzles and shared kisses. And then they laid there, in each other's hooves, and neither need anything more than that. Thank you, Chrysalis whispered, and the words were meant for far more than this one solitary evening, already more than she ever deserved. Celestia smiled. I wouldn't be so quick to say that, she said, and her grin mirrored Chrysalis at her most sinister. After all, I haven't told you what I want to do next time. Ah! Oh my god! Oh, holy shit. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, this took fucking forever to record oh. oh my god it's like four in the morning oh. um i think the um the recording quality kind of went to shit uh, i'm sorry for swearing so much but oh my god Oh, I've been here for like an hour and a half or something, recording this thing. Oh. Yeah, um, 
towards the end of the reading, the audio quality really went. I mean, not the audio. The my reading really went to shit, and uh, I'm sorry about that, but you can't understand. It's it's four in the morning, and I and I'm really tired. Uh, but anyway, hope you enjoyed, and until next time, bye.